Good luck. Alright. Uh, let's see. Are there any other special greetings we're making to each other today? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This schedule works out quite well for both of us, uh, so we're both pretty happy about that. Um, whoa, 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 okay. Uh, that's interesting. Hmm. I think we'll recede back into playing Fourth Foul Rook like we've done sometimes in the past. Our opponent's playing some other Rook strategy. Um, it's not Static Rook. So... I'm debating, do I still want to play my Rook to the third file? Well, regardless of what I do, my Silver might be best suited in the center. Um, so let's bring this Silver out and have it be ready to fight where, uh, where it's needed. Um... If I put the bishop on the third file, it blocks me from putting the rook there. But I think this was the plan. Yeah, I admit I'm a bit confused. We have spent some time in recent weeks uh, watching Shogi Harbor give detailed lectures about uh, Fourth Vowel Rook. So, hopefully I can figure out how to apply some of this. Regardless, it is concerning that opponents will pick things that deviate so heavily from what is documented so well. The other thing that I could consider is if I move my Silver out, maybe I play Opposing Rook here. Um, I haven't completely settled in on fourth file, and move by move, it seems my opponent really wants me to uh, to avoid picking fourth file here. All right, there is a proverb that says push all the odd file pawns, and we're seeing some of that today. We're also seeing all of the pawns being pushed, which is a bit of a novelty. Um, all right, I don't think my opponent sees this very often. So what this is signaling is that I want to exchange rooks and begin attacking as soon as possible. Um, now they have a weak pawn here and a weak pawn there, and it's not possible for them to cover both weaknesses in a single move. So now I just have to weigh, is my king secure enough that I can launch this completely unsupported attack? Um, so if I bring the silver into the center, they might push on the third file. If I take, they move the rook over, I bring my silver out, they attack my silver, my silver goes forward, and then they take here. Um, you know what? <laughs> oh dear, I do get in trouble so often. Um, but boy... 
Like, they spent one, two, three, four, five moves pushing pawns, and they have not completed a castle. Like, this is asking for me to attack. I don't think I can say no to that. I think we have to oblige my opponent on this. If they really wanted me to attack all three of these pawns at once with my silver, um, I can't uh, just let that sit there. There's an obvious weakness on my bishop's head. Um, I really don't know what to make of it. Okay, this is their way of saying that they will use... Uh, well, they can't cover this. Um, they're going to push it forward if I attack it. Uh, but also the silver is misplaced. They have a very heavy concentration of generals on this side of the board. Um, so it could be sane for me to go back and just play a normal game at this point. Um, whatever normal means. Ah. <sighs> I'm so confused. Also, if I bring the bishop out to hit the silver, if they defend it, do I have a, another move to attack? I wonder. Maybe my rook actually belongs back in the fourth file again. So that my bishop can move freely. Oh yeah, that was the problem with moving the bishop, is that this just hangs. Um, so if I bring this silver out, they could bring the rook over to defend the pawn. And then uh, I, I'm not really free to move my bishop at the moment. If I try to advance on the rook file, I don't get very far. Um... Hmm. I think best is that I just get my king the heck out of here. Chasing down this pawn is not worth it. I did not expect them to put the silver in the center of the board because this makes it very difficult for them to attack any time in the near future. Um, This is begging for me to exchange pieces. Um, I'm not so eager to oblige, because I think I can force a rook exchange later if I want to. Um, so... trying to figure out what castle to build. So Elmo is when you bring the silver up and over and tuck the gold behind the king. But um, that has some vulnerability. Um, okay, so if I defend my rook, then they are going to switch the rook over to the third file and not allow me in. 
think I'm just going to build half Mino like I usually do. So I'm still waiting for them to decide upon which way they intend to attack. The further my king is from the rook and the bishop, the safer it is for now. Okay. Tearing up the base of the king's castle. Exciting. Um, let's just pretend we didn't see that. Alright, so this is Elmo. Uh, Yamaguchi says that the weakness, as usual, of like Millennium and Elmo and just about anything is this pawn right here. Um, so I've been dilly-dallying quite a bit, trying to decide where my rook goes, where my bishop goes, where this gold belongs. Um, the gold being here makes it difficult for the rook to invade on the third file. Um, Hmm. Hmm. Decisions are hard to make. I'm going to complete this castle when he's going to attack me on the third file. And somehow it's going to work out for me. Somehow. I just have faith. All right, we're building the biggest castle ever here. Um, hmm. So I've been debating, do I push my fourth or third file pawn? Which goes first? Honestly, the second file pawn here might not be bad either. It makes a temporary target. Um, but no, the fourth file prevents a lot of nasty surprises later. The third file would allow me to break down their third file pawn eventually, but exposes my diagonal, which can get very bad very quickly. Um,
Yeah, we'll play this to plug the diagonal for now. And allow me to build Tower Mino. Um, I'm more than a bit conflicted, because as much as I want to move my Rook to the third file, I don't want to be the first player to do that. Um, so this eventually was going to land, and he has landed, but can't go any further. Oh, right. I forgot. Um, so, uh, yeah, the silver can attack on the third file. That's definitely a thing. Um, hmm. surprising bit about this it isn't that I forgot it's that this might actually work out for me um pawn up knight takes silver takes silver well no if I pawn up I'm threatening a bishop exchange and crazy stuff happens and then this rook has to move when I bishop drop and promote over here um I don't know how good that is for me. I'm already in time pressure. Well, actually, I don't need to go into this madness, do I? Um, my silver can start attacking stuff, too. So, silver up, pawn up, silver takes, pawn takes, silver takes, they take my bishop. I take their silver, they take my rook, I take their knight. This, at some point, perhaps, might be too crazy. Um, if I lead in with the pawn push, we exchange bishops, I've protected my pawn. They are going to break on the second file. Hmm. I think this is okay, but maybe that's because I have no sense of danger. Normally they'd like to attack on the third file, but the silver is under fire. Um, maybe it's still fine for them to attack and just ignore the hanging silver. I might have tried that. Instead, we have this position. Like I said, I have no sense of danger, so if I'm in trouble, we're going to find out after my opponent moves. What I'm seeing is that if they use the silver to protect this pawn, I can do a bishop drop on their in their camp, forking their rook and silver on 5-3. Or 
rather, 5-7. So, it's yeah. I guess the saying here is that like this silver, the ship looks beautiful in the harbor. So that's not what ships are made for. Um, all right, so they have attacked my knight and taken away one of the squares. I could do a bishop drop on to protect the knight. Um, If I'm in danger, please show me what that danger is. It's like, yeah, they can sack a knight to open this diagonal and promote the bishop. I'm still not afraid. Because sacking the knight allows my knight to attack. And if they bring the silver forward, I have a bishop drop back here. If they do nothing, I just push this pawn straight down the second file. So, we have options. Oh, this would get my silver trapped, but there's nothing that can attack it. Um, that could be fun, at least until I give him pawns somehow. Yeah, let's do it. If they want to open their own castle for visitors, uh, I'll visit. Sure. That's what this game is about, right? All your pieces just say hi to their king? Um, yeah, actually if they trap my silver, bishop there is mate in one. Um, so that's not happening this turn. Right. Um, but this way I have a fork at the very worst. Oops, what happened? Let's put it over here. So nothing's defending this silver. Okay, now there is a piece defending the silver, and my bishop is trapped. So I'm playing with fire. Um, I think it's fine. Playing with fire can be fun. Alright, so I would like a knight. Can I get a knight, please? Pretty sure I can get a knight. Um, if I push the pawn twice, I do like that my knight is blocking this diagonal. It's pushing the pawn three times might be my best play here. Um, but if I really want a knight in a hurry, I offer a knight exchange. Actually, if I want it in an even bigger hurry, we push this right now. <laughs> Actually, that allows a silver to fork my knight and rook, um, which I didn't see until after pushing the pawn forward. Um, I think it's still fine. I mean, the whole point is to attack, so um, what's a knight or a rook or a silver between friends? 
Uh, the problem is that the silver drop is just so fast in the short term. Um, but the silver is very far from my king. So maybe it's fine. Yeah, I don't think I could have safely forced a knight trade anyway. There are very few things that are safe when I am playing. Uh, I did spend some time looking at other piece drops, I just didn't find them appealing. But a silver drop somewhere, maybe I'd give my bishop somewhere safe to run, could have been a bright idea. Um, as is, I'm more than ready to sacrifice it uh, for this silver on 5-7. Just because this king is in the most interesting castle ever. Um, and this bishop is not yet active. So this looked like the moment to attack. Yeah, so I need to take one tempo to run away from this fork. Unfortunately, that's going to allow his knight to escape. Um, if I do pawn takes, they take my rook. If I take the knight, I don't even think they want my knight at that point. Um, so yeah, I think taking one tempo away... Unfortunately, allowing their knight to escape, I think, is still the best I can manage here. Um, I could drop the silver to hit their promoted, um, whatever piece that is, that's promoted silver. Um, but then they attack my silver. That doesn't come out very well. See, I'm just straight up down material at this point. But... Um, promoting will allow me to get more pieces promoted, and, you know, we can get something of an attack running. Uh, I think we're both blundering, though, because I should have hit this silver. No, actually, I can't promote my rook just yet. But, yeah, I think we're still... Odds are, since there are so many candidate moves on this board, it's impossible to make a move without blundering. But, um... Still. Wait, uh, yeah, since I can't safely promote help. anywhere, we're gonna sacrifice here, then take the knight, threatening a silver drop, forking the gold and the rook. Um, having taken the knight, and since they still don't have a pawn in hand, my next threat would be to attack this promoted silver. Um... Unless somehow I can get this rook promoted as is right now, but I don't see a way to activate my rook. As far as I can see, my rook is dead, and I'm well served to have this knight in addition to pieces I can already drop. Um, now, since they have a knight, well, knight can't drop in front of this promoted silver. So next, my threat is to activate the rook. Even though I can't immediately promote it, getting it on this active line will be useful. Um, because then I can threaten a silver drop, hitting this gold, hitting this pawn. Um, I can't counter it by blocking with a piece here, so... I think... I'm not sure what they're going to do this turn. They might directly attack my rook. Uh, since it is trapped. And I'm still trying to find if I have some way to mate the king in the center of the board, but I don't have a gold, so checkmate is unlikely. Um...
can also drop a silver here and start harassing their bishop. Um, or just attack the king in the center. Or both. If I do that, they lift this gold, and then I have another silver drop forking the rook and gold. So, surrounding the king... I mean, this is tempting. Um, probably their best move is to activate the bishop. Or to do something to defend this square so that this silver can go there next. Um, or kill two birds with one stone by, like, dropping the bishop here or somewhere on this line. Just have to be careful where you put it. Um, because I can attack stuff with my rook. All right, so my big idea is I wanted to put a silver here. I can't do that right now. Um, that is going to happen soon enough. And I'll win the bishop Can't back if we and or win the king. Uh, okay, if I take this, king takes silver drop. Silver drop, I don't Can't have a mate. Deal. Silver drop, king back, knight drop, there's still no mate. I need another piece. I'm not sure which piece I need. Um, they've tied down their bishop to defending this piece. Actually, I don't need to drop a silver here. This pawn is defended anyway. Um, Hmm. This is an active square for my knight. The threat is to take this silver and then to take the pawn and then the bishop. But also, I uh, attack the square right next to the king. It's too early for me to have dropped the knight. I considered the knight drop at 5-4 as well. It didn't seem any... well, maybe it's better. Uh, uh, yeah, now they just bring the silver up toward my rook, thwarting my plan. Uh, Hmm. Let's see. Still get a silver out of this, which is not a bad deal. I don't even have to give this up right away. Thirty Hi, Vey. Um, we're going to take it. This activates my rook by putting it in my opponent's hand. Some good they can do with it. Hate doing that.
This goes against everything Destiny was teaching me about how important, or I'm sorry, everything Pawnhub was teaching me about how important it was to keep this token on the other side of the board. But, um, it's not for nothing. I think we've sufficiently killed all the pieces. I still have this knight takes pawn threat. Um, but also their king is extremely exposed. I only do this because they're threatening to open the diagonal and make use of the bishop. Grabbing the bishop, it doesn't help me too much right now, but trapping the bishop is valuable. Uh, actually taking it, if they do gold takes, I have this bishop fork, so that I contradict myself. Um, because this fork that also wins a gold and promotes the bishop is valuable. Um... As much as I say it's not about the material, at some level it kind of is. I want to attack the king, but like they just keep giving me so much material. It's just so hard to say no.
I'll take any piece I can get for the rook. Hmm. That's a dilemma. I want my castle to remain intact for a bit. We have to do something to surround this king. Hmm. Surprises abound. Um. Sanjudio. 
30秒40秒 Good gravy. I don't know. I do not know. It was so tempting to just place a silver here, try to ignore everything that's going on. Um, which might have been the best move, objectively speaking. But also, this is winning. I just couldn't read whether or not there was actually mate in the center of the board. Um, what I could read is I saw this rook fork, and I saw that I could block it with a very, very sad rook. Um... And that this protects the silver, and if they interpose another piece, then I can put the silver here again. And everything's the same, it's just I have another piece on the board. And they have a rook here. Um, so, the only thing that's different is they could sacrifice this rook for the silver uh, to try to escape their king. Which might work. But I still think uh, I have such an overwhelming material advantage at that point. I can win that. <sighs> Earlier, I um, I don't know if I should have done silver 3-3. Three, three. Like a drop here, threatening to drop another bishop here. I could not read that out. Um, this is fully what I expected. And we've reached the same position as prior to them sacrificing the rook here, except now I have the rook in hand. Uh, and God help me if I can't mate here. Um, even worse if I do get mated instead of not being able to give mate. Um, but yeah, silver drop 3-3 three, three still looks like a very strong move here. And unless he protects against it, I'm basically... All Guaranteed to go here. Um, the only way I would not play Silver Drop 3 3 is if I find mate. Um, which I'm not finding elsewhere, so. <sighs> I mean, it's gotta win. Knight takes, Silver takes, the king has nowhere to go. There's nothing you can do to escape it. Um, alternative moves. Wait, rook drop. King advances. King's surrounded. Um, it's interesting. I'm not seeing the mate. We're going to go back to here. Yeah, rook drop, I don't know. Um, king up, I have a bishop drop, king here. I didn't see a mate there, so I'm, we're going to go just surround the king and then checkmate it. Um, this is the least elegant thing ever, and I pity the viewer, but, um, you know, we'll take it. 
A win's a win. All right, Rook drops mate in one, right? Got this, this, this covered. Bishop covers that, Rook covers all the rest. I'm not in check. This is mate. Good game. That was exciting. Uh, toward the very end, I was a little relaxed because I did manage uh, a position where I could just keep taking pieces. Um, somehow that felt comfortable. Uh, uh, Yeah. We'll see what interest he has. I know what hour is it over there? Um well, it's around dinner time for him. So if he wants to analyze, I'm more than glad to. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Destiny. I'm promise I'm still working through an elementary checkmate book. I think that it was good that I at least found this silver drop. Like, this is the stem from which everything else is going to be possible. Um, mm. um, yeah, I really don't think his king is going to escape in one piece. It just doesn't seem possible. Bishop 4-6, well, we're looking at it now, I guess. Um, oh my gosh. Wow, this would have been a nice find, wouldn't it? Um, that would have been a very nice find. Okay. Entirely reasonable. Uh, he's got a tournament tomorrow, so he's got to have dinner and prepare. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it leaves us to analyze together. Uh, cool. All right. So we're going to analyze on the big board. Uh, I sense that I'm outnumbered by my viewers. So let's take a look at whatever viewers want to look at first. Um, yeah. Also, rook 2-5 before dropping the second silver. Also, not sacking the token. Yeah, yeah, I was not super happy in that position. Um, I was quite dissatisfied that I did not have enough time to figure it out, because, like, the token sack is very against what you're normally supposed to do in a shogi game. But also, I saw that I was gaining the rook. Um... Uh, instead of moving rook two one after, all right, go back to the knight drop maybe. So let's go back. Yeah, I didn't like my knight drop either, and perhaps my knight drop was uh, yeah, it's just a series of not very shogi like moves. Uh, try a silver drop on three. Oh, I saw three eight. Is 3-6 appreciate... Well, okay, 3-8 loses material. 3-6... Oh my goodness. Yeah, that is really nice. 
That's not to say that we can't, in the future, if it's useful, drop the knight and do other stuff over here, but this is immediately useful. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, if he takes time to deal with this, then I could sack the rook and then put a piece on this uh, seven six square. Uh, yeah, and so knight seven five actually surrounds the king at this point. Yeah, there must have been some escape path for his king, or even if there wasn't in the game, like there must have been some firmer resistance that could have been put up. Um, because my attack was kind of helter-skelter. Uh, so, let's see. I thought instead of moving rook 2-1 after the silver 4th, 3-4, you could just take the knight. Yeah. Um, wait. Yeah, the bishop here actually isn't doing anything. Thankfully, my king is secure enough that I can, like, do such stupid moves, taking material that doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, like, this is clearly uh, going after the king. And now that we're after the king, then the other moves, uh, not targeting the bishop, but targeting this part of the board, um, makes more sense. And that way he has to give up the material in this part, and we just keep attacking in this direction. And then this bishop can't even cover these squares either. So you don't even have to sack the rook. But um, this splits the attention of their pieces. So, okay, I guess we go back earlier. Um, yeah, this thing surprises me. Um... Like, okay, yeah, he's covered a lot of pawns. This, uh... I could play Tempo Lost Bishop Exchange if I'd studied it, but I haven't, so... Um, we're just gonna transition to fourth file rook. And here I had to pick some file to stick the rook on. Um, so I put it uh, opposing on this file, but... There's options. My opponent's interesting decision of where they're going to put their pieces and pawns. It's kind of flexible, but also kind of slow. Um, yeah, maybe third file is best here. I don't know. We'll, I guess, leave that for the opening theoreticians. I did remember to castle. Um, there are probably some crazy tactics that result if I go this way. Like, this seems a bit dangerous because this opens up uh, a square right in front of their castle, if they do that. Otherwise, I just take the pawn and I can eventually push on this file. So this... I didn't really want to go there, but... Um, Oh, attacking the, the one on the left here? Earlier you thought um, maybe attacking the pawns with the silver could have been a good idea. Yeah, earlier than this. So maybe somewhere around here. Hmm. Like, oh, it's my move, yeah. Um, where I've not committed my rook yet, and everything's already still kind of up in the air. This could have been interesting. Oh, you said that er uh, before. Okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, that makes sense. I, mean, I do not often see my opponents play Boat Castle in combination with this, like... There's just so many ways to play this opening. And, like, this combination of putting the silver here and the pawn up there... 
can't say I've seen that before. That's kind of special. Um, so I haven't quite figured out what this is, but um, it caught me by surprise. So, um, yeah, I played patiently during the game because I didn't really have a lot of belief in my opponent's attack. Until right about here where I suddenly, like, was very scared and panicked. Um, and maybe they actually do have a strong attack. Um, I was concerned about this. And if I take, if they take, if I take, if they take... Um, I take, like, this is one hypothetical line. Um, are there others, perhaps? I don't know. Like, I don't see a bishop drop here deciding anything just yet. Um, so, I take here. They could take here. I could do this drop. They, like, put the rook somewhere. I don't... If I don't run away now, can I get out later? Maybe. So, yeah, actually, that's fine for me. Um, further, this is probably okay. So that's why I was saying this here... And how do we evaluate exchanges here? So I was thinking this might happen. Oh, that's not so great, is it? All right, um, just kidding. I mean, that's a really he heavy silver drop. Maybe the bishop drop there makes more sense, but still. Yeah, I have Igmino. They have uh, Elmo as this. Um, so I'm somewhat safer. Um, it's just a little bit harder for them to attack my castle. So I think this is why they backed off and didn't do all that. But if they weren't going to commit to that, then why play this up in the first place? Actually, this is probably the way to do it. Um, oh, wait. I thought during the game I saw something they could do here. I'm getting confused. Yep. Good morning, Cormac Gobert. Um... Yeah, I don't think, um, I think I have slightly more space, but their castle's still really hard to break down. I'm bad at evaluating castles. Um, so yeah, if we go into this hypothetical line, I don't think I'm much better. Um... I mean, I do get this silver, which is kind of nice. Um, so, yeah, I have one additional general defending my castle. It's not really about having the Mino here. Um, I think it's more about just... Um, having slight advantage in space and having this defending space. Uh, okay, but they missed a bishop drop instead of sacking the pawn on the second file. Uh, so my rook can't protect the knight. So we're saying in the, the way this played out. Um... So my rook cannot protect the knight. They should drop this bishop immediately. Uh, 
Oh. Oh, crud. <laughs> yes, so point A is this. Um, and so once you figured this out, that this uh, is a problem, then you have to make a, a really depressing bishop drop somewhere. If you're defending the knight, or you are going to start some crazy attack that I don't think works just yet. Um, so yeah, this, uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, I see. Oh, bishop drop an 8-8. That's probably saner. Yeah. Because the bishop's not any better farther up the board here than it is back home. Yeah. Yeah, this is a nice safe space to attack from. So, yeah. Black has some problems, that's for sure. Or rather, I have some problems here. I know my pieces look dark, um, but I'm playing as Gota. Uh, there's the white piece tile. So, yeah, that is the refutation to my pawn advance. Um, and because of that, um, like, this is ill-timed. I need to do something else. The bishop drop on 5-9. Um, uh, to just trade the silvers, you're already winning, just force peace trades. All right, let's get to where I did the bishop 5-9 drop. Oh, I'm sorry, no, you're talking about um, uh, after the mistake. You're talking about um, instead of him pushing the second foul pawn here. Yeah, I should not be doing this bishop drop. Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, just trade silvers here or anything. After I drop my bishop on 3-9, I see up here. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll get to where that happened. So it's after my mistake, but later on in this game. This fork was unnecessary. Trade the silvers. I'm already winning. This did cross my mind. Um, like this position is a very pleasant one. Consider this here. Um, I considered this. Probably should have considered this more. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, the knight exchange offer is excellent, and they can't really refuse it because then I just promote the knight and then take this and start promoting pawns over here. Um, so, yeah, they kind of have to accept this offer. And this just accelerates my pawn, and like, yeah, my castle is safe. Um, both of their heaviest pieces are blocked, and the king is stuck in the center. So there's really no more moves that need to be looked at here. Um, could we try a pawn advance hitting the head of this knight? Um... Unfortunately, this has the same flaw it had in the game. Um, it might be playable, since my position is so dominant. But, um, yeah, the knight exchange is probably better. Um, so yeah, when did this... So, yeah, he sacked a pawn on the second file and then had no pawn in hand, and I was able to defend my knight. I guess this is the movie missed. 
So this is when the tide turned, metaphorically. Um, and then he blocked his bishop, which just decided the game. There was no coming back after this. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that silver's painful. Uh, so, um, yeah, I know previous game, my audience enjoyed some of the target practice at the end after I had missed some mates and argued like two hours into the analysis or something. It felt like two hours. Well, I was including the game, but like, it felt like a very long time into the game plus analysis. The audience still wanted to continue looking at the end game. And I think our audience here is just being polite today. Um, or just not having the same appetite to look at all the ridiculous stuff that, like, I missed. Because I missed a lot here in Time Pressure. Um, yeah, it was an... In well, uh, what do I say? Because, like, I'm not supposed to say that this was fun, right? Um... Like, after my opponent allowed me to do this and did this, and I'm just, like, very much in a different position than I've been in most of my last ten games. Most of my last ten games, I have been suffering badly through most of the game. This, um, I'm kind of in cruise control. This, uh, I can probably manage to win somehow. Even if I completely F things up, I'm probably still okay here. Um, just, like, the rook's blocked, the bishop's blocked. I have a bishop in hand. I have control of the second file. Like, it would be a masterpiece if I managed to blow this. Um, so, yeah, and they did the best they can trying to defend this, but... So, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it's fun when, like, I actually am in the driver's seat for once um, and actually feel confident about it. It's different. It's a much, much needed reprieve, but um, I don't think, I don't know whether I'm supposed to say that I enjoy that or not. Um... Yeah, this, uh, we got some assistance. Admittedly, like, not an assistance in the form of anything illicit, it's just my opponent helped me out a bit. Uh, admittedly, I did allow this shot, which was just stupid. Um, after putting my bishop here, which just traps it. So, like, um, they call this tourney to master. Uh, we're still all amateurs. Um, yeah, I think this is probably, um, the final indication that, like, um, I don't know, that neither of us is going to find anything, uh, changing the outcome of this game. I think had he placed the bishop, like, elsewhere, or, like, maybe here, or if I try this, he has an obvious reply. Um, but the way he places it down here instead of, like, anywhere else on this diagonal, um, gives me the ability to target the bishop. But here, there is no target, so... That was a tempo he really couldn't have given me. Um, and I almost gave it right back. Like, here, I'm kind of, sort of, threatening to trap the king. This... I... I'm really not sure what to say about this. I was, during the game, also trying to find, can I just add more bish or silvers down on the board to somehow trap the king? Like, does something like this work? I don't know. Uh, during the game, I only managed to find this. Um, and then I saw, well, then the king goes here, and then I check it again. It goes here, and then I just, I'm out of silver. So, um, I'm not the greatest at checkmates at the moment. Um, 
A token sack is okay if I don't drop the knight. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, dropping the knight just slows things down. Um, because then I can no longer use the knight wherever I need it later. Either in defense or in attack or both. Um, so the sack is okay, but yeah, this would have been very nice. Um, like, this is very hard to defend against. They don't want to, like, commit their knight to defense. But um, the king doesn't have too many squares to run to either. Yeah, the sack is even faster. Um, is this what I played? I forget. No, I played this. Uh, so, pawn... Yeah, it'd be nice if I had a mate. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm just at this point, um, I'm just perplexed. I am so perplexed. Okay, we have a silver drop. So variations here are these. This one just gives up the rook and allows me to continue attacking. So this is the other variation. And my concern, probably unfounded here, is that giving away um, this kind of material, taking the rook, giving up maybe both silvers and allowing the king to escape is problematic. Um, but like, what else can I try? Okay, okay. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'm concerned with the king escaping. I'm just concerned with looking like an idiot on stream. Um, I mean, we already know. <laughs> the secret's out that, like, I'm not an uh, expert, but... Um... But, yeah, it's just, like, if there were a mate and, like, I'm missing it, that would be what my concern would be. Um, why not move the gold first? Okay. Could play that in the game the way it should have been, except for the night drop. I know, right? But, um, yeah. Yeah, so the night drop is unnecessary and greedy and extremely slow is the problem. And maybe somehow it doesn't work, but it's just not of the right mindset, because, like, I can't even force this to happen without giving away more material. Um, yeah. So, okay. It's good to know that much of what I did here was decent. Um... Yeah, taking the bishop, I guess, is best. If I'm so concerned with promoting the rook, why don't I just do it? Um, yeah. Maybe this would have been interesting. I mean, this way he could actually move the bishop, but it... Now I might actually have a mate threat. This could have been cool. 
But yeah, all this kind of stuff. If there were anything like this, certainly in Bioyomi, we both missed it. Um, I like the idea that the king might be able to escape somehow. Um, this pawn drop didn't look right. Um, if the object is to keep my rook as far away from the king as possible, I would have tried this. It probably doesn't matter much. Um, but anyway. So yeah, I got greedy. And then gave away the rook. Um, during the game, I was trying to figure out if I actually have a mate. Uh, I should just practice real puzzles instead of trying to turn my games into puzzles. Yeah, why don't I just study real Sume problems? That would be a healthier thing to do. Um, yeah, so the other thing I was split on is like, okay, yeah, he's attacking my gold, I'm attacking his silver. A lot of stuff is being attacked here. Um, this looked kind of fun. I don't know if that was worth it. Oh, okay. Oh, pawn drops on the king's head were possible for a very long time. Ah, this is what I'm missing. There we go. Yeah, stuff like this. Just, like, really basic stuff. Maybe not necessarily here, but in a lot of positions. My position's just so dominant, and become even more so if I just, like, use my pawns. Um... Yeah, okay, directly on the king's head, pawn 4-5. So not here, but uh, after he takes this, it's like somewhere around here. Pawn 4-5 drop. Another standard idea. Uh, yeah. Okay. I felt like I was missing something. <laughs> um... Okay, yeah, that's very good to know. Uh, yeah, that's the kind of device uh, or decision making move that I want him to make. Um, so, obviously, there are five legal moves, um, some of which the two that advance immediately get mated by this gold. So, yeah, this would force a retreat. After which my attack becomes so much easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If king takes gold 5-4, etc. Yeah, in fact, this... you're right that if he takes the pawn, it's not mate in one like I just claimed it is. But it's still so dominant. Yeah, this is exactly what the doctor ordered. Um... And pawns are the least, they're the lightest piece, so, um, yeah, that would have been the most natural thing for me to try to look at first. Okay, so I missed that for, like, ever and ever and ever in a row. Um, curiously, during the game, I actually did see this, and I rejected it, because I'm just ridiculous like that. That's, I can't even explain why I rejected this. Um, yeah, I just don't understand. Like, I definitely saw this. I saw king takes. I saw this fork. Uh, I saw this. It takes. Takes. And even this, like, however completely ridiculous that is, this is still winning. But, like, also... Like, everything about this is wrong. Um, ah, the knight no longer covers the 6-7 square. So this is no longer as compelling as it once was, because my knight's kind of dead here. Um, 
actually, that doesn't mean that we have to go retreat there right away. We can still try to stop the rook or something, but stopping the rook's ultimately not going to work. But we can make things... Yeah, I don't know how this is going to pan out. Um, but your point is, like, this knight really belongs back here where it could help attack the king. Um, so, yeah, you're right, but, like, now he can actually start to get an attack underway. Um, maybe push this, maybe knight drop here, maybe pawn drop there eventually, something like that. Um, so, yeah, the fact that my knight moved gives him places to run to. Uh, well, yeah, you're right that, um, my attack is much swifter, um, Yeah, it was a game. Um, for hmm. so at this point in the tournament, before this game, we were both one win and two losses, um, and now I stand at two wins and two losses. So next round, we're gonna get paired against someone else who has similarly gone two and two. Uh, it should be an interesting experience. Who's winning the tournament? Um, yeah, I could take a look. Uh, so yeah. Uh, for those watching the video, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks uh, to Destiny uh, for help with this analysis.